I'm going to go over these myths and knock them down one by one and back it up. So, here's lie number one. It's all in your genes. How many of you have heard that, well, I'm overweight because it's all in my genes? How many of you have heard that? I'm not saying that you believe it. How many of you have heard it? Uh, you all know that there's a problem with obesity among Native Hawaiians. I mean, that's no secret here. And if you look at surveys across the country, Hawaiians have double the rate of obesity of the national average. And you already know the national average is ridiculously high. But this is it, you know, obesity rates among Native Hawaiians are double the rate of the national average. And so some people are led to say it's all in the genes, right? And it kind of makes sense, right? Because, I, you know, I've had six, five, six, seven hundred pound patients when I used to work uh, in Waianae where I had lots of Hawaiian patients. In Honolulu, in town, I don't see that high a rate because I don't have very many uh, native Hawaiians in my practice in town. So people would think that that was true. But if that were true, then if it was all in the genes, just think about this now, because this is an important point. If it were all in the genes, then 200 years ago, when Captain Cook arrived, then obesity should have been worse, right? Because the genes were pure back then, right? Doesn't that make sense? Right? Because there were pure Hawaiians today. There, you know, there are lots of mixed blood, and they've still got obesity rates higher than ever. So if it was all in the genes, then if it's pure, then it should be a higher rate, right? Well, look at what Captain Cook's artist drew. You know, how many obese Hawaiians do you see here? And the answer is none. And so then you've got to say, well, wait a minute. If it's all in the genes, where, where is the obesity here? Pure Hawaiians now. So now you have to, now if I, if I ask the question again, is it all in the genes, what's your answer have to be? It has to be, it can't be, right? Can't be. Because if it was, then they would have been obese back here, even more so than we have today. So it's got to be something else. And by the way, if you don't believe drawings like this, you can look at photographs. I actually went to Bishop Museum and I pulled these pictures out. Uh, when, I, when I came back from studying nutrition at Harvard, I actually came back to study the traditional Hawaiian diet because I, because I knew about the problem we had. This is back in the 1980s. I actually went to Bishop Museum to pull out these pictures. I said, well, wait a minute, are they overweight? And it was stunning because I couldn't find any pictures. The only overweight Hawaiians I would see were the ali'i who ate a very different diet that was much closer to what we eat today, right? Lots, you know, lots more meat, lots more fat, lots more kalua pig, etc. In fact, in 1823, I found this statement, the common people are of a thin rather than full habit. Thin rather than full habit, right? What would you say if they said, oh, the Hawaiians are a slim population? You go, give me a break. All you got to do is go to Waianae or Waimanalo or any of the Hawaiian communities, and you know there's a big problem. And of course, in the old days, they ate taro. Let me give you a clue. Taro is about 1% fat. Modern American diet is like... 40% fat. Does that give you a clue as to what's the problem? And then if you, and I'm going to go into the next myth in just a bit, but just remember, this is mostly carbohydrate. And they ate the tops too. Hawaiians never wasted anything. They ate all the greens. So they ate lots of vegetables as well. So it's clear that the change in food makes a big difference. It's also clear that the high carb diet that Hawaiians used to consume was associated with leanness and not obesity. Now their leanness in ancient times and high rate of obesity in modern times may not be a result simply of a high carb diet or a low fat diet or the calories in the foods. It is possible that the foods that they consume today turn on obesity genes. In other words, the foods that humans consume may have an epigenetic effect. That is turning on or turning off genes that determine leanness or obesity. More recently, we've also found that gut flora probably plays a major role in determining body weight or body mass index. So it's clear that while genes may be involved in obesity, it's not all in the genes because other factors also play a role in leanness or obesity. No one is predestined to be obese by their genes alone, and everyone can do something about controlling their weight by what they eat, drink, and do. To learn more about how to turn obesity genes on and off and how to alter gut flora to your advantage, 
subscribe to this channel and look for upcoming or previous videos for more tips on vibrant longevity from Club 1 to Any Plus. Go to AskDrShintani.com and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click on the bell for notifications. This is Dr. Shintani for your health.